Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineering Explain channel and welcome to this session. And in this session, I am going to take the solar radiation. Solar radiation means sun's rays in the form of a radiation or rays reaching to the earth's surface that we call as a solar radiation. And here, before discussing the solar radiation, we will take there is a fundamentals of that solar energy briefly, then we will go for the solar radiation. Here, the solar energy fundamentals means here that the solar energy is the radiant light and heat from the sun that has been harnessed by the humans since the ancient times using range of ever evolving technologies. From the ancient days, there are different technologies they have been used for the harnessing of the solar energy, now the technologies are changed and new technologies are using for the harnessing of that energy in the form of light and heat of the sun's radiant energy. Then solar radiation along with the secondary solar resources account of for the most of the available renewable energy on earth. Here the solar radiation along with the secondary solar resources, secondary solar radiation Resources means those are the indirect form of the solar energy. The indirect form of the solar energy, what are they? These are the wind, biomass, tides and water resources. All these are the indirect forms of the solar energy. And those, most of the renewable energies except the geothermal energy, all are solar energy indirect forms only. Then all other renewable energy except the geothermal drive their energy from energy received from the sun. Solar technologies are broadly characterized as either passive solar or active solar depending on the way they capture, convert and distribute sunlight. Here there are two forms of the solar energy we call. One is an active solar energy, another one is a passive solar energy. And active solar energy means the directive we are going to convert into useful form of the energy. The solar energy into useful form of energy. For that we are going to use the two technologies. Active solar techniques include use of photovoltaic models, that is solar cells or solar to electrical, electrical conversion and solar thermal collectors, solar to thermal conversion with suitable equipment to convert sunlight into useful outputs. That is the active solar technique for the this using of the solar energy. Then solar passive solar techniques include orienting a building to sun, selecting a material with favorable thermal mass or light dispersing materials and designing the spaces that naturally circulate air. Here the whatever the building is there, where the it is required to either cooling or heating of that building the building is constructed in such a way that orienting towards that uh, sun in such a way that during the uh, heat whatever is there okay that means uh, during the uh, whatever the solar energy is available and it's a hot atmosphere during that time the cooling of the building should take place by using the sun heat energy and in the winter season the whatever the heating of the building is there, that should be taking place by using the sun's energy in such a way that designing of the building. That we call as a passive solar techniques. And in this way, we can use the solar energy for the uh, getting the energy from it. And now the solar radiation. In short, the solar radiation that penetrates earth atmosphere and reaches the surface differs in both amount and character from the sun's uh, from the radiation at the top of the atmosphere at the top of the atmosphere okay there we know that earth atmosphere is up to a certain distance okay in the space and behind that there is a vacuum and when the sun's radiation solar radiation reaching to that atmosphere that amount and character is different when reaching to the earth's surface that amount and character will be different because that whatever the 
solar radiation same thing during entry into the atmosphere earth atmosphere in the first place part of the radiation is reflected into space when it enters into the atmosphere the part of it reflected back to the space itself and especially by clouds furthermore the radiation entering to the atmosphere is partially absorbed by molecules in the air okay that some part is reflected back by the clouds and some part is absorbed by the atmospheric air and here oxygen and ozone O3 found from the oxygen absorb nearly all the ultraviolet radiation this ozone layer what we call okay that will ultraviolet rays that we absorb that actually benefit to the human beings okay the ultraviolet rays will not reach to the earth surface so that the harmful radiation we are not going to get that's why the ozone layer is required in the atmosphere okay that we are discuss usually and the water vapor and carbon dioxide absorb some of the energy in the infrared range in the infrared radiations what are there okay in that range the some energy is absorbed by the water vapor and the carbon dioxide and the some part that is ultraviolet radiation and infrared radiation ranges those will be absorbed by these two things in addition part of the solar radiation is scattered means it changing its direction that is its direction has been changed by the droplets in the clouds atmosphere molecules and by dust particles okay that is clouds molecules what are there and the dust particles from that the some of the radiation will be scattered that will be changed their direction like this the whatever the radiation are reaching to the that above the atmosphere those will be different and reaching to the earth surface those will be different those will be vary in the form of amount as well as the character then now we will discuss that in what the solar radiation is reaching to the earth surface here this is the surface of the earth what we will consider and for that the whatever sun's radiation in the form of rays reaching to the earth surface directly and that is called as a direct radiation the sun's radiation reaching to the earth surface directly that is called as a direct radiation that is also called as a beam radiation and some radiations or atmospheric absorption warming of the air the air particles will be absorbed that one and get warmed that by receiving the heat from that radiation and some radiations will be change their direction those will be diffused by the that clouds as well as the, the air particles and that is called as a scattering the scattering of the changing of the direction of that radiation will be taking place and after changing the radiation direction then later those will be reaching to the earth surface and those will called as a diffuse radiation as these are changing the direction and deflecting because of that one in from the all the directions the rays are reaching to the earth surface in the form of diffuse radiation and some of the rays from the reflecting by the particles of the in the air itself or by the clouds and some from the earth surface and like this the some radiations are reflecting reflected back by surface and reflected back into space from the surface the some radiation will reflect and by the some air partic particles in the air as well as the, from the cloud the some radiations are reflect back okay those will be reflecting back to the in this way the radiation will be different which are reaching to the earth surface and here their definitions will take that one the solar radiation that has not been absorbed or scattered and reaches the ground directly from the sun is called direct radiation or beam radiation this radiation it is not absorbed it is not reflected back okay and that is reaching from the sun to the direct earth surface that is a direct radiation or a beam radiation diffuse radiation is solar radiation received from the sun after its direction has been changed by reflection and scattering by the atmosphere okay by the deflection and scattering by the atmosphere its direction has been changed 
and because solar radiation is scattered in all directions in the atmosphere diffuse radiation comes to the earth from all the parts of the sky from all the parts of the sky the diffuse radiation comes okay, and reach into the earth surface and here the whatever the there are two types of radiations the beam radiation and diffuse radiation what we consider which is reaching on the earth surface in the form of solar energy then the sum of the beam and diffuse radiation is referred to be total or global radiation together both these together we we'll call as a total radiation or a global radiation then here how the radiation energy reaching to the surface we have we discussed that one okay then what form those are reaching and what actually happening during the uh, coming from into the atmosphere and reaching to the surface of the this solar radiation and later in next session i am going to discuss about the measurement of this solar radiation that is the direct radiation measurement and diffuse radiation and sunshine recorder also will discuss in the next session or next session and after that later the conversion methods what are there okay that is the solar energy into the useful form of energy that also i am going to discuss in the next session on mars okay here the solar radiation is one of the renewable energy source and that can be used for the different applications either by converting that into a electricity or the heat available in that radiation that can be used for the our application and in with the next sessions i am going to discuss about the measurement and the different conversion methods also thanks for watching if you like subscribe uh, share and comment on my sessions thank you all